Hey, it's Steve Womet. Part four, Devil Went Down to Georgia. Today is the victory solo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the whole thing. It is broken down into all the various elements. You are gonna find witchcraft. You're gonna find tomfoolery. There is some shenanigans and also a little bit of sleight of hand. So buckle up, let's go get it. Let's get right into this. First part is our old friend, the Mutron Octave Divider. He is back. <laughs> yeah. So that's really simple. We just have uh, six string open, three, four, seven. Excuse me, three, four, six. Same thing on the fifth string, but I'm bending those. Kind of making it sound mean, okay? And then we go into okay, so that's just and then the first sleight of hand comes in. I don't know, would you call it witchcraft? Okay, the next part I'm going to call witchcraft. So what we did originally. The notes are pretty, uh, pretty basic. I just went from so, and then I went that's it. But Here's the trick. When I played that originally, I had mentioned that I used the DI into the computer and then I reamped it uh, through the Marshall. However, what I didn't tell you is that anytime you heard that sort of, I don't even know how to describe it. It sounds like a guitar, but it also sounds kind of like an escalator. The notes would just move from one to the next and it it had a strange sound uh, character to it. So the way that I looked at it is when I finished the solo, I did a, a variety of versions of the solo. Um, and the whole thing is kind of a Frankenstein, a comp of all of those different parts put together. This is where the sleight of hand comes in. Um, I did play those parts on the guitar. However, I also had a MIDI pickup that was picking up those notes. And the thing that's interesting about the older MIDI, te MIDI technology was when you sent the notes out, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't accurate, it was that it didn't bring a lot of the inflections in that you might hear with a guitar. You, for instance, there's gonna sound like a slide or might get a little bit of noise, that kind of thing. Well, when you have the MIDI sounds going through, it's just it's just data, right? So there's there's not going to be any of that. So what I did is I set everything to be full velocity, so uh, MIDI note uh, 127 on the volume, and then that sound that was created from the MIDI was just some sort of sample that was in the guitar um, MIDI synthesizer that I then piped back through the Marshall. Uh, you'll hear this throughout the song in different places where you get that weird kind of stair-stepping escalator sound. I guess that's the only way I can describe it. So it was played on a guitar, but then 
it was sort of hashed up and then brought back through. I think the closest example I can use to that is how Eddie Van Halen used a Wurlitzer electric piano on And the Cradle Will Rock blasting through his Marshall. Super cool sound. I used to wonder as a kid, what is he, what is he playing? I don't understand how his guitar is sounding like that. And it's because it wasn't even a guitar. In this case, it is a guitar. So that said, there's a little bit of sleight of hand. So you have this part. Okay. And that is that entire section. Now we get to the next section. What is this? This is a capo. You remember this from solo, I can't remember what solo, but uh, number three, uh, video number three. Okay, so what I have is an A and a D. And this is the tomfoolery. So for this part, And that was taken from uh, me ripping off The Exorcist. Now, I didn't do it exactly the same, but the idea is there. Um, I've loved that movie since I was a kid, and there's a reason. Uh, because, as you can see... He's a liar. The demon is a liar. He will like to confuse us. But he will also mix lies with the truth to attack us. Okay, so that's that. You get done with that, and that's kind of random. I, I had a bunch of different takes of that, and uh, that wasn't originally supposed to even be there, so that was interjected in. That was a punch in. I just put that in as another section. Then you have... Just a straight up D minor. Okay, that's it. And then that's the end of that section. Now, we lose the capo. We no longer have the capo on. And then comes a very strange part. But there's even more trickery. Now, you need this from Groove Gear. Now, you can use a sock. You can use a hair tie. I use these because they're very convenient. I use them all the time in the studio. And it just eliminates some of the uh, open string ringing. But when you get done... do a series of pull-offs and taps and punches. Sets you up for that part. Let's look at that again, slower. touch you up for that. And you can keep this on uh, for the next line. This next line was done again with the MIDI um, tomfoolery or sleight of hand. I'm not sure what you want to call it. Pretty simple. Just arpeggios on two strings. But again, really fast. Now the next part is a blend of real guitar and the other. The whole point of why I used the MIDI was because I wanted to have an otherworldly sound on top of the guitar. Uh, I never got that. I, um, I just ended up switching over to that sound in certain places. Uh, once again, using that sort of devil trickery thing. I think it worked out really well. So this part, you will require, oh wait a minute, I just gave you the middle finger. I didn't mean that. Uh, you're gonna hold your pick, and then this part is just two string arpeggios all the way up with a whole lot of variation. <laughs> Can't have that on for that part. 
So uh, once again, when you're doing this part, you're really, it's kind of a modified chicken picking thing. <laughs> Van Hale in there, eruption. So that's the entirety of it, okay? Do it one last time. You can do it with a pick if you want, but it's not gonna be as clean. <laughs> There it is. The devil went down to Georgia in about as much detail as I can imagine putting into it. It's been a seriously fun journey and a tough one for me uh, to go back 13 years and try to unearth all of the things that I was doing in that relatively short period of time for this song. Uh, I can't thank everyone enough for all of the support, the outpouring of really cool comments, and I hope that you've learned something from this. And if you like this series, we're going to do another one. I've been asked a lot about We Three Kings. Now, I did a video quite a long time ago of just a playthrough of it, but I never really got into all the details, sort of like what I did with this one. So that one is next. So stick around and click like. I think it's over here or there. Click like if you like this. Uh, subscribe if you like this. And get ready for a whole lot more content. Have a great week. I have to give another shout out to Dave Rowe for helping me on this. Uh, back in 2009, I think it was, I had a catastrophic disc failure on my PC and I lost all of the data after the game was over. Uh, the guys at uh, Neversoft and Activision were kind enough to send the stems back to me that I had sent them. Um, and I believe Ryan Green probably still has the original tracks somewhere. Um, I hope, because there's a lot of things that I could have shown, uh, shown you that I can't show you. Things like the MIDI technology uh, and the notes that uh, blended together and gave that strange, unique um, elevator sound or escalator sound that I was talking about. Uh, I still don't know what the actual instrument was that I was set to, but it was obviously very close to a guitar. Um, it may have I don't think it was plucked. It was probably just some sort of a pure clean tone, obviously not a distorted tone because it was going to get the sound back from the amp again. Um, so that was helpful now that I at least have the stems, but I can't actually go back and look at the original session um, that I had. There were a lot of tracks going on. Now, here's the other thing. Um, when I got done with the first take or the first full version of the, the Victory solo, um, it was really fiery, but it was not hell fiery, if you know what I mean. It didn't have enough going on to me with ear candy and interest to, to make it suitable for the game. I thought it needed more. And that's why we have this sort of Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein based solo that I stitched together. Um, yeah, I played it all, but I did not play it all in one pass for the version that you hear. Um, it just it just had too many things going on. I mean, we start out with the Mutron octave divider, and if I hit bypass on the Mutron, it's uh, it makes all sorts of horrible sounds and it cuts the, the quality of the sound for the pure tones out. So that was a punch in. Um, then when you get to the next part where I'm doing the speed picking with the D and the A on the, um, on the E string and the B string, well, we have to have the capo. Um, and then to keep the notes from ringing or getting extra MIDI triggering notes, um, I used the um, the tie. Actually, I don't think I had the, um, the Groove Gear uh, orange tie. Where is that? I don't know where it is. Anyway, I didn't have the Groove Gear uh, tie. 
So I was wrapping the strings down there and it requires doing it in sections. Now, again, this was never meant to be for anything other than a video game. So um, that's kind of just how the whole thing got put together. And, um, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> it still turned out really cool.